this whole stealth mission thing right now, but when do you think we can get out of these crates? It's pretty cramped in here with Seely. <gasps> oh, oh, oh. Come on, Seely, you know I've been going through a growth spurt. Oh, oh. Okay, just because you can't see another inch doesn't mean it's not happening. Oh, oh. oh uh, what do you mean you're hungry? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay, I'll ask. <clears throat> Luca, what do you think the odds are that we could order a pizza down here? Knock twice if you think yes, knock three times if you want the classic, knock four times if you want the works. Luca? Luca! Ah, I'm taking your silence as a yes. Seely, reach in my back pocket and get my pokey gear. I'll call pizza hoot hoot. Order door? Yeah, they deliver. So with that, you and Luca are now down here in the basement in your individual crates. And as far as you can tell, you're assuming Ringo has left. <laughs> okay, need to enhance some communication skills here. So what would you like to do? You're in a box. I'm in a box. Yes, <laughs> you are. <laughs> and what would you like to do about it? I would like to get out of the box. Get out of this box. And we come out of the box. Okay, great. You get yourselves out of your crates and you find that you are down here in this sort of entrance hall area as Mikey described to you last night. So in this zone, you're basically at a sort of crossroads T shape here with the stairs coming down from the break room. There's this entrance hall that you guys are in that has other crates and things. And then there's a hallway going right and a hallway going left. Lovely. So what would you like to do? I would like to listen. I'm going to put my ear to the wall and hear which way the pokies call. Okay, go ahead and uh, just roll to uh, read the room, I guess, in this one. Six. Six total? Yeah. You do not hear the sounds of any Pokemon throughout the hallways. You just hear general machiney secret base sounds. Okay. <laughs> There's like an air conditioner going some mechanical sounds. Somebody flushes the toilet upstairs. Can Luca get Mikey out and then get a sense of which way? Yeah, which way anything would be? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. He pulls out Mikey and he just tells him to get a lay of the land going each way, trying to stay hidden. He lets him out of the Pokeball. He's like, ah, oh, back here. All right, uh, cool. What do you want? Yeah, Mikey, just, we've got to figure out which way things are at. Well, what do you want? What are you looking for? Like Pokemon. Yes, the Pokemon, Mikey. The other Pokemon. All right, I'll take a look. So go ahead, and uh, if he's trying to stay sneaky while he's moving throughout, go ahead and roll to uh, accept challenge plus agility for him first. Okay. That's an eight. And then go ahead and roll for him to survey environment. Eleven. Cool, 11. So I know that one of the questions you want to ask is what direction are Pokemon? But besides that, what else would you like to ask from that survey environment list? What's hidden here? So where are the Pokemon and what's hidden here are, are what we're looking for. All right, so y'all just wait a moment in the entrance hall while Mikey just... Yeah. <laughs> quiet laugh, quiet sneaky laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Good, better, better. While he just whoosh, turns into his shadowy form and slinks along the walls, checking things out. Are y'all doing anything here in the entrance hall while you're waiting? Yeah, I'm texting Ringo. All right, and saying what? Where are you, homie? <laughs> Question mark. Do you think you could get the truck to, like, a back loading dock in the alley? Question mark. You text him that and he will respond shortly. Also, don't steal my Pokemon Diablo. <laughs> He's mine. In the time that Haunter is exploring the two ways of the hallway here, you get a text back from Ringo. He says, I'm upstairs having an ice cream cone. I didn't see a back loading dock. There's just a back door. And I'm not going to steal your weird Tarmelian. A rude. <laughs> <laughs> Who was working in the front again? Dusty was the employee up at the counter. A young, studious-looking fellow. Then maybe I text Ringo and I'm like, try to make friends with Dusty. And let us know if Aquamarine or anybody sneaky comes in. Kind of like a lookout. He texts back, make friends or take him out. Make friends. I'll let you know when you need to take him out. Okay. And he... Short, shorthand with this person, huh? <laughs> uh, at this point, Mikey comes back. He's like, all right, so there's uh, there's Pokemon both ways. So I don't know what you want to do with that. 
There's Pokemon that way. There's Pokemon that way. Okay, Mikey, be a little more descriptive. Are they shadow Pokemon which way? Are they normal pro- people Pokemon? Well, Mikey is a ghost. Mm-hmm. So roll, roll 2d6 plus instinct for him. Nine. Nine. All right. With a nine, he says, I mean, I don't know for sure. I mean, there were some of them that definitely had like a weird vibe. Over on the right, there was one big one that had a weird vibe. And then uh, over on the left, there was a couple and they were like in tanks and stuff. (gasps) Both of those are key phrases I would need for big. (laughs) Oh, no. All right, Luca, should we split up? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that that's, that's probably good. Which, which one do you want to take? The one where he said there's the big one or there's some smaller ones in tanks? I'll go for the big one. All right, cool. I'll go for the uh, ones on the left. I think you would do better end. with tanks because the last tank I dealt with, I did crack. Sure, sure. So All right. Yeah. So the two of y'all split off and start moving down the hallways. Are you sneaking down the hall? Oh, you know it. Cool. Go ahead and roll for yourself to accept challenge plus agility and then also for Luca too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, homie. That's right. That's a 12 for Pearl. A 12. For once in my life. Is that like a critical success or a 12 Uh, total? It's a 12 total. Fantastic. Excellent. And then for Luca? 11. 11. Great. Full successes for both of y'all. Beautiful. Who would you like to go with first, yourself or Luca, as you all start to investigate as you're splitting which directions y'all are going down the hallway? Let's do Luca. Okay, cool. So as he heads left and you head right, Luca follows Mikey across the way. And I assume that for right now, that means that he's kind of switched Mikey to the front of his party for a moment. Sure. But he goes with Mikey and they slink along the hallway down the left while you go right. As you're going right, the hallway feels a little bit colder. But... As they go left, in this left corridor, there are rooms on the right and left and one at the end of the hallway. And Mikey points at the one on the right-hand side of this hall as where the Pokemon are. Luca then looks around, I assume, to the one where Mikey's pointing to. Totally. He sees that it looks like a sort of training observation type room. Like, there's a small arena. There are some cages and things. Are we underground now? Yes. Oh, okay. So that's why the loading dock thing was not as much of a... uh, An option. An option. Got it. But yes, so Lucas sees that this seems to be some sort of testing room. There is a PC on a desk. And additionally, there's a little training area, some cages, and two tanks. The Pokemon in the tanks have not seen him yet, but there are two small seahorse-looking Pokemon, and as he comes around the room, he gets a ping on his aura reader, and they both look different, like two two different little seahorse Pokemon. But he gets a ping as he comes into the room, and Mikey points like, yeah, no, it's, it's, that's, that's what I got. Let's try to use hypnosis on one of them. Great. Which one would you like for Luca to try to use hypnosis on? There's a little blue one, and there is a little brown and purpley one. One's got more of a seahorse look. The other one has more of a leafy sea dragon type look. Let's try the leafy sea dragon first. Okay, cool. So I'm going to roll for it to tough it out plus instinct uh, with disadvantage because it does not no, know that here. Mikey's there. Cool. All right. This could be good, guys. Yeah. Disadvantage rolled a five. Uh, so <gasps> the Skrelp does fall asleep in its tank. And so I said to the guy, if you want the contra... Uh, You okay there, buddy? (laughs) I thought we loved our Thursday morning real estate talk. The horsey is very verklempt. That is from the scrap. I am offended. Okay. Well, actually, let me me roll roll to see what genders they are. Let's see here. Okay, so it is a male horsey and a female scrap. (laughs) Patricia. (laughs) (laughs) But yes, the scrap has fallen asleep and the horsey is none the wiser. Would you like to also try to hypnotize the horsey? You know it. All right. Rock a bye, horsey. Oh, Luca doesn't sing. <laughs> that is certainly true. Mikey just once again. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> 
the rings coming from his eyes envelop the horsey and it with a six with the disadvantage Whoa. also falls asleep. So both of these Pokemon have now fallen asleep. Hallelujah. Okay, um, Luca would try to cu- like to catch them both. Okay, great. Which one first? Well, let's just go in the same order. We'll go with the Screlpy. All right, the Screlp first. Go ahead and roll to catch Pokemon for Luca. So just... 2d6. Can I use a grape ball or? Yeah, you can use. Do you want him to use one? He's got like grape ball, dust ball, lure ball all in his inventory. All right, we're going to use dust ball. All right, dust balls for both of them. Yeah. So go ahead and roll for the scrap. That's a 10. Great, a 10. You got plus two from the dust ball, so that bumps you up to a 10. It's minus two because it's at full health, but you have a plus one because it is suffering from a status effect and another plus one because it is caught unaware slash restrained. Oh, great. So we're back to 10. So it gets you to a full success with a 10 as since it is a shadow Pokemon, Luca. Yeah, buddy. Pulls out the snag machine on his arm as he prepares this dust ball and he throws it. Got a nice arc so that it plops into the tank to get the screll. Heck yeah. All right. We thought the last episode was the spy one. This is the spy one. (laughs) The ball floats in the water for a moment as it shakes once, twice, a third time and clicks, and he rears up to throw his second dust ball at the horsey. Yeah. Yes, so go ahead and roll for that one as well. Same situation there. It's going to come out to a plus two with your roll. Okay, I rolled a nine. Great. A nine, a mixed success. Horsey is a tier one Pokemon. It's an A1, so... All that you need is a mixed or full success. So again, arcing the dust ball that has been snagified, gets that hook shot into the tank... As the sleeping horsey is sucked up into it, it plops into the water and shakes once, twice, three times, and clicks. That's how cool teens do it! Yeah, Luca! (laughs) He's never been more of a teen than now in this moment. He's doing what he was made to do, subterfuge, and Um, sneaking around. I like to imagine that in their tanks they have little rocks. Like rock homes, yes, little little coral homes. Yeah, so maybe maybe whoever's looking via security cam would just think, oh, they went to sleep. <laughs> nice. Yeah, they went in their little rock homes. Yes, they just they just floated down to the bottom amongst the the corally bits. Luca turns to Mikey and tries to give a high five. Yeah, and then passes straight through. <laughs> but the thought was there. I appreciated the intent, bud. Woo! All right, we're acting like real people who know how to play the game. <laughs> That only means Pearl is going to melt down, but it's fine. (laughs) Before we get to Pearl, do you want for Luca to look at anything else in this room? Um, totally. I would love for him to try to get into the computer. All right, cool. Go ahead. Taylor's oldest time. Is that right? Am I right? Go ahead and just roll for Luca to survey environment. I don't think a read the room is as necessary because the two Pokemon who are visible in the space have been snagged. Wow. Love the high instinct. It's just a seven. A seven. Okay, a mixed success. What is the question that you would like to ask from Survey Environment? Is there a resource here I can use? Ha ha. Yes. Ooh. There are a couple of key things. The computer, he tries for a minute to get into it, but to no avail, and he doesn't want to set off any sort of uh, alarms of, you know, failed attempts Mm -hmm. trying to enter password. So he gives up on that after a minute. But he does, in this room, next to the desk in this area, there aren't currently any other Pokemon in the cages or things like that. But on this desk next to the computer, there are some just scrawled out notes in a neat cursive handwriting. Ooh. And they are not super in-depth. It does seem like a sort of shorthand of uh, whoever wrote them. But the notes seem to have something to do with that there have been changes made to the shadow Pokemon creation process. Mm. uh, And that they are researching more effective training methods to make their moves even more powerful. And that they were in the midst of working on this Skrelp and Horsey, training them. Okay. But also... Looking through the cabinets of the desk, Luca sees that there are two Pokeballs that look to be regular Pokeballs, but they have a little golden, like, it looks like the clapping emoji yeah. <laughs> symbol on the top. I think he takes those. He takes the two of those. And that seems to be everything that is of note in this room. Do you want him to keep on checking out other spaces? 
in this hallway. Oh, sorry. I also think he will take the notes as well. Cool. He takes the notes. Yeah. Clearing the desk off. Nice. He clears the desk, takes the stuff. Okay. Um, let's have him. Mikey didn't say there were more Pokemon on this side. Those were the ones that Mikey was aware of on this side. The ones that he saw were these in the tanks. I think he'll head back to Pearl then. Okay. So he starts making his way back down the hallway toward Pearl. Do, 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 do. Yes. <laughs> if there's any other stuff down this hallway, y'all, y'all may check it out together. But yeah. meanwhile, in the right-hand hallway, as you are making your way along, it is getting uh, cooler in this hallway. There is one door that is on your left where it sounds like there is some uh, mechanical whirring inside Ooh, and things oh no. like that. And then up a little bit further ahead, you see that there is uh, what looks like just that cool dry ice just leaking out from under the door. Look, it seems like there's a very cold room up ahead. Uh, And as you get closer, you do hear some sounds of movement inside uh, that seem to be coming from up that way. They sound like footsteps or just more machine noises? Roll 2d6 plus logic. Because it's sort of discern traitsy. That's a flat nine. A flat nine. You hear the sounds of steps being taken, but it sounds like hooves. And then... Whoosh, little... Oh, oh, my, oh, my, oh, I love it. And... Oh, wow. We got a lot of pokies in there. That is what you hear up ahead coming from what looks like that cold room. Do you want to go straight toward there? I do, but I'm trying to think about if I open the door, if I just make my entrance completely known, is my sneak still in sneak mode? You are sneaking currently, so I would take that into account when you try to, like, open the door. Okay, I think we'll just try to open the door and close it as quickly as possible. All right, cool. So just going to try to get into the room uh, very quickly and quietly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, it will truly be a feat for Pearl. Cool. Is Fettuccine still up front for you? No. Uh, is there anybody that you are trying to have help you get in there? Like, is it are, is anybody at the front of your party who who's up there while, as you're sneaking around the place? Okay. If it's icy, he'd be strong against ice. So, yeah. That's okay. all I have to go off of right now, besides sounds. Cool. So you are just going to try to open the door really quick and get in with Fanta without whatever is in there noticing. Yeah, Fanta's in his Pokeball right now, too. Okay, he's in his Pokeball, so it's just you. So go ahead and Pearl, roll to accept challenge plus agility. Oh, agility. I'll give you an extra plus one because you're already hiding successfully from earlier. Okay, that's a 10. A 10, a full success. Excellent. We imagine that Celie gave me a little ice to slide in on really quick. Nice. And then I put her in a Pokeball really fast. <laughs> that's the plus one. Excellent. So you immediately, without even looking at what is inside through the window, yeah. just take your chance of crack the door open, do a little roll in, shut the door behind you as quickly and quietly mm-hmm. as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you find yourself in this room ducking behind a big old ice cream carton. Oh, well, that's perfect. That's my jam. <laughs> as you... Can I look inside the carton really quick? <laughs> uh, the label says... Superman. Oh no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> from your not previous the best flavor, not from the your best previous flavor experience, have. yeah, you've personally tasted that flavor and it was bad. Not the best. No, no, no. As hold up. Yes, guys. Off mic moment. What if there's the ice cream Pokemon inside this freezer? That would be so cool. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay, go ahead. As you are ducking behind this or Mew. carton. <laughs> It could be Mew. Mew. (laughs) It could be Mew, though. As you are ducking behind this carton of bad ice cream, you peek around it to see what the source of this noise is, and you see that this looks to be the ice cream production room where they make the ice cream. This is kind of like my heaven. The silly scoop. Well, is it? Because (laughs) unfortunately, they make bad flavors, but... (laughs) Because here in this room, huge cooler room where all this ice cream is being made this this big old freezer you see that there is a large blue mill tank which uh, pings on your aura reader evil cow that's why your ice cream so bad it's full of evil that is clomping around the place supervising you do have your aura reader ping and it does alert you that this is a shadow mill tank uh, 
no. But it is supervising this ice cream production over a trio of ice cream cone looking Pokemon. I called it! Who seem to be very scared. No! But they are being forced to make the ice cream. I called it. Pearl's shocked. She shook it. She looks. She hits herself. She looks again. She hits herself again. She looks to Seely. <gasps> Odor? They're real. Odor, Odor, Odor. Yeah! No. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's what I want to do. But Big is in here. Big is not in here. But the cow is big, size-wise. Sure, Mikey didn't lie. He didn't lie there. You didn't ask him what it looked like. <laughs> um, I imagine there's like an annoying uniform for this cow, too. I mean, the cow is in a Team Nasty uniform. Oh, you are awful. <laughs> it's a big blue cow in a Team Nasty uniform. All right, we're going with the initial instinct. We put Fanta at the front of the party and they go, Yeah! Stop it! <laughs> Set the ice cream free! Pearl roll initiative. Yeah. <laughs> I have an 11. All right, with initiative rolled. Fanta has got an 11. The mill tank got a 10. Pearl, you're going to get a surprise round on it because I'm assuming that your screaming is happening as Fanta is oh. anime running forward to do his first attack. Absolutely. Great. So for your first uh, surprise attack against the mill tank, what is Fanta going to do as he runs forward doing a sweet flip off of a carton of ice cream? Oh, that is so cool. I've never been so proud. Let's go ahead and do, um, since he flips, let's go ahead and have the flip land into a double kick. Nice. So go ahead and roll for the first double kick. Ten. Ten, a full success. Nice. Roll 1d6 plus 14. Whoa. 18. Great. So that's going to be 12 double to 24 points of damage on that first one. And then roll to hit with your second kick. Wow, I forgot how powerful Fanta is. <laughs> Ten. 10, another full success. Roll one more, D6 plus 14. Uh, 15. So that's going to be nine double to 18 more points of damage to the mill tank, as even with its high defense, those were two solid boom, boom kicks from Fanta. Come on, little ice cream cones. Come over here. You'll be free. Follow me. They're trying to float around the perimeter towards you. Light, light, finish. Oh my God, I love them. Oh my God, my family, my family. A little trio of them. That's my family. I think Vanilla are the cutest little, oh my gosh, look how cute. When you say trio, does it mean that there's three of them? There are three Vanillite. Oh my gosh, I got a family of three to feed now. <laughs> it's a lot of ice cream to Don't make. Don't count your ice cream before it melts. A lot of ice cream to make, that's exactly true. But that was your surprise turn, but now it's Fanta's actual turn as Ooh. the mill tank has definitely been taken off guard yeah. from that double kick. These fiery feet coming down. It's getting hot in the cooler. Let's do double kick again. Now that he's on the ground, he'll do a couple roundhouses. Nice. Uh, I have nine for the first kick. Nine, great. Okay, so that's gonna be a mixed success. So that'll be 1d6 plus seven. 12. Okay, so that'll be six double to 12 points of damage. Roll for the second. Yes. 12. 12 total. Excellent. So that'll be D6 plus 14. Oh, yeah. 19. 26 points of damage. Four double kicks in a row. Boom, 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 boom. Come over here. I'll never make you sorbet. You'll be free. Light, the new light. Oh, my God, I love you. Seely can be your mom. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, I just got to double check the mill tank's health real quick. <laughs> so guess what? Oh my God, no. <laughs> I just no did the way. Math. Oh darn it, I needed to catch that sucker. <laughs> With those four hits. Oh no, I needed to catch him. It deals 80 points of damage, which is exactly how much health the mill tank has. No. But with but. your snag machine, there's no penalty against trying to snag a Pokemon that's been knocked out. It's in the rules. So. Oh, okay, great. Uh, also, it's kind of trapped right now. So uh, <laughs> you can, if you would like, go ahead and roll to catch Pokemon if you would like to try to snag the Shadow Miltake. I would like to try to snag that Shadow Miltake. It's very cool. As it's like... <laughs> It's, it's jaw is like hanging loose, <laughs> like it can't. <laughs> All right, 
right, let's try just a normal Pokeball. All right, a normal Pokeball. Go ahead and roll. Okay, it's a flat six. What would I add? All right, it's below 10% health, so it's a plus two. It was very much caught aware, uh, even if it wasn't right now, but still with the sneak attack all at once, I'll give you that plus one from that. But it's also got a minus two because it is a tier E mm, Pokemon. Yeah. So it just comes out to a seven. seven. So as you go to catch it, it falls to the ground. It shakes twice, but then bursts out of the Pokeball. Ooh. And it's like kind of fumbling around and it's going to try to get to the door. What do you want to try to do? Can I try to catch it again? You can attempt to if you want for Fanta to uh, try to restrain it or anything like that. It is, quote, knocked out, but it's just trying to get away. Okay. It has no will to fight right now. Can Fanta try to just dump a bucket of Superman ice cream on its head to blind it? Whoa, they're messy. (laughs) Yeah, he just goes to dunk this to uh, keep it from just having any idea where it's at or where it's going or anything like that. Go ahead and roll uh, 2d6 plus might for Fanta. This will basically be him uh, trying to lend a hand to you. Yeah. Okay, that's a nine. Okay, a nine. So a mixed success. So he'll uh, essentially from lending a hand via that give you a plus one to your capture attempt here. Would you like to try another normal Pokeball or what you think? Um, I'd like to try. I have a heavy ball. Would that be good? A heavy ball? Yeah, it's a big old mill tank. I think a heavy ball makes sense. And also, like, while the while it's kind of, like, dizzying with the carton of ice cream on its head, the heavy ball is so heavy that Pearl does have to, like, roll it to the Pokemon's feet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and open it up. Fun to help me open it up. Go ahead and roll to catch Pokemon. Okay, I'm going to use a heavy ball. Okay. And I rolled a five. But could I replace this five with a seven via my lucky feet? Okay, yeah. So since the lucky feature for catch Pokemon rolls, it gives you a certain base number to go off of before your pluses and minuses. Instead of a base five, you're going to have a base seven. All right. So then you've got a plus two from your heavy ball, a plus one from Fanta's helping. And then from the other pluses and minuses of it's a higher tier, but it's at low health and it's also restrained right now. Comes out to another plus one. So an 11 all said and done as uh, with the heavy ball chucking it at this blue mill tank in its team nasty uniform. It's even got a little mustache, a little milk mustache. We'll rip that off your face if you're joining our team. (laughs) But the mill tank gets sucked into the ball, which with a thud lands on the floor of the cooler. It shakes once, twice. A third time and clicks. Hooray! You have captured the shadowy mill tank. And as the mill tank is captured, the vanillite are like, Vanilla, vanillite, vanilla, vanilla. You're <laughs> safe, you're safe, you're safe to be Casey again. <laughs> you no longer are you chained. Vanilla. I set their little chains free. You do, you un, you undo their shackles and they float freely. The three of them little just doing a little ice cream dance around you. Oh my gosh, this is my personal heaven. Luca will never believe this. He was always doubting you, Reveal, but you're here. And I give each of them a hug. You do, and all three of them cuddling close. One of them especially cuddles in a little closer. I had a guru tell me I would find you. (laughs) The one that looks like it kind of got like licked once (laughs) is the one who hugs you the tightest. (laughs) He got licked! (laughs) No! Oh, that's so cute. Also, I would like to name this mill tank. Okay. I would like to name uh, this mill tank Bell. Perfect. Blue Bell. Of course. <laughs> also, fun fact, if you go on Blue Bell, Bell Creamery's website, they have Bell's blog, which was started in 2018, and you can meet Bell, the cow, on the carton, who's blogging about being in the commercials. Oh, my gosh. Pretty funny. <laughs> She's only got one entry, so... Oh, my goodness. So what are you doing about the Vanillite since they are just kind of floating around the place right now? They're not shadowy Vanillite. They were just being just being held hearted. here. They're good hearted. Well, I just uh, pop open a couple of balls and I say, come on in. I love them. I love them all so much. Come on in. You'll love it. It's a personal home for you. We're safe and fine. 
<laughs> they will all three willingly go with you. Are you sticking them each in like a regular Pokeball? Unfortunately, I don't have any more regular Pokeballs. Oh, no. What inventory, you got? Which is kind of a bummer. Well, I have two Great Balls, so we'll use two Great Balls for one. And then for the one that got licked, let's go ahead and use a level ball. Okay. The one who got licked is a female. Love her. All three of them are actually female vanillite. Yes, ladies! They're really cute. As you put them all in these balls and I assume send them off to the PC. Yeah. Everybody's going. Luca rolls up and he's like, oh, Pearl, what is happening? I, I, I heard like a commotion. I, <laughs> I heard mooing. I just took down a mill tank, Luca. And I set a whole civilization of vanillites free. They're real. They're real. Okay, so wait, they got they got mill tank of vanillites just down in what is? Oh, this is a big cooler. What the heck? Yeah, the mill tank was an awful, gruely boss, and chained down the vanillites in their little cones. Oh, jeez. Uh, okay, all right. I just I heard the mooing and a big thud. So a really unhappy workforce, let me tell you. <laughs> but Fanta did great. <laughs> it is at this point you get a text from Ringo that says, "What's that noise? Kid at the counter got suspicious." Uh, you can just say it was a um, machine malfunction or something, or uh, you could just say you could just say that that you just saw a random Pokemon on the street use rollout <laughs> and hit a building. Or let Diablo loose in the bathroom and you can blame it on Diablo. <laughs> I text all those options. Okay. But Luca. Yeah. I can't find Big. Have you found Big? No, I haven't seen Big either. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, there's still more rooms in here, so I don't, if we can we can look through the rest. Yeah, but... let's do it. Let's do it fast. Let's not waste any time. Okay, great. So, Are there any more rooms on my side of the hallway? There is one more room on your side of the hallway. It was before the cooler. Okay, let's go in that room. You go into this room that had the sounds of machines and tech in it. Uh, Luca says, also, yeah, I caught a couple of Pokemon, and I also got two Pokeballs out of a desk. That's amazing. Yeah. But you all go into this room, and you see a large machine with conveyor belts and lots of mechanical pieces and lots of halves of spheres that are sort of feeding into it with little spiky chevron patterns on them as you have found in this room their snag ball machine. I remember this awful, awful machinery from long ago. <laughs> well, you haven't seen one of these before. You saw the shadow machine, but this is like production of snag balls. You had oh, snag I ball see. storage previously, but I this see. is like production. And you see that this machine is not at the quickest pace. Nobody is, like, manning it right now. But uh, it is on and, you know, gradually churning out these snag balls, the familiar purple and yellow. Um, can I see if I could really, really quick to figure out how to turn off this machine? Sure. Go ahead and roll 2d6 plus logic. Rough, Pearl. You have got to go back to boating school. Four. You have no idea how this machine works. <laughs> Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> but it's, it's going, it's doing You'll its thing. You love to see it. Okay. If I have time, I want to come back to this room. Okay. Okay, great. Um, let's go to Luca's hallway. Great. Going down Luca's hallway, you pass by the room that he got the shadow horsey and screlp out of, and also there was the desk and everything. You pass by that. You see that on the other side of the hallway, do y'all just go in that room real quick? Yeah, we're, we're still trying to be as sneaky as we can. I mean, if we hear voices, we're not going to bust in. Sure. Uh, you do not hear any voices in this room, but uh, you go inside sneakily as you can and see that there's nobody in here. But going inside it, it seems as though this is... Uh, living quarters of some sort. Uh, it doesn't Ooh. seem like the nicest, but it seems as though maybe it's for recruits and you see that there are beds with little trunks at the uh, ends of them and stuff like that. Okay, let's, I, again, it's just speedy, speedy, speedy for the effort of time. Speedy Since, looking through? No, 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 like just speediness. Let's go to the next room. Okay, cool. As y'all get out of that room uh, and start going down toward the end of the hallway where there's just one door left, y'all come back out in the hallway and you see that Ringo is now down here kind of huffing and puffing a little bit. He says, 
Y'all gotta learn to be more quiet. I had to tie that kid up. Oh, that's fine. That's great. That's I'm glad you we had you up there. Oh, jeez. All right. Also, I just I took his pokeballs. Are any of these like? Is there something wrong with these? Keep I know all y'all of have them. your weird thing. Keep all of them. All right. <laughs> well, you should go back up and be a lookout though, in case anything weird happens. All right. Uh, Wait, hold on. Stick around. Let me open this door really quick. All right, sure, yeah, uh, cool. Uh, and he's just like, what do I do with these? Uh, you do know that there is a ping on your aura reader toward one of the balls that he's holding. Don't worry, we'll spend some quality time. I'll make you a deputy. It will be great. All right, whatever. We just got to move quick, I think. And y'all open the door to this last room. Well, I kind of want to go back into the machine room and either, um, I kind of want to burn it. <laughs> Up to you if you want to do that now or later. Ooh. Your choice. Okay, wait, you guys stay here. Uh, okay. Just what for you... like one second. All right. I run back to the room with the machine. Sure. It was next to the room with the freezer, right? Yes. Near the ice cream production room. Okay, so I know that you said the freezer room just had a door with a window. Sure. Are, were there any other doors inside the freezer room that could possibly connect to the machine room? Uh, no, they're on opposite sides of the hallway. Oh. And the little window is just like a little tiny, like, freezer window in the door. I see. Where you could see inside the cooler. You need to chill out. Okay, we go back to the machine. Who's we? Me and Fanta. Okay. And I say, Fanta, can you try to double kick and stop this machine? And he kind of gives me like a quizzical look. And I go, that's how they make more shadow Pokemon. And then he's like, I'm going to double kick it. Nice. (laughs) Go ahead and uh, roll for Fanta to use double kick. Just 2d6 plus my eight. Okay, he begins the process of trying to just put dents in it and take it out of commission, uh, and it is certainly making uh, quite a ruckus as he is kicking it, uh, trying to dismantle it with his birdie feet. As he is doing so, go ahead and roll instinct with disadvantage because it is quite loud. Five. As Fanta is going about trying to take apart this snag machine and, and kick it until it can't make snag balls no more. You do not hear the sounds of healed footsteps behind you until you hear a voice. Well, well, well. Looks like someone has a habit of destroying things that aren't hers. Hello, Pearl. Oh, hello, evil mermaid. Glad you finally decided to show up to the party. I am going to thoroughly enjoy this. And she signals to the tentacruel and a familiar shadowy crawdont standing next to her to lunge forward. Roll initiative. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. No regrets. friends, Jonah here to say thank you for listening to this episode of Postcards from Pearl, part B of our very special episode 100. What better way to commemorate the occasion than a battle with a Team Nasty admin? But before we get to that, I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our fabulous partner Dice Envy. This week, check out their Wee Lads dice sets. These goblin-sized metal dice will make a marvelous tiny addition to your collection of click clacks. You can get 10% off of your purchase at Dice Envy by going to diceenvy.com slash Questco or by using promo code Questco at checkout. That's Q U E S T C O for 10% off of your entire order. If you're a fan of what we do here on Quest Company Jr. and you want to help us out, please go to our page on the Apple Podcast app or Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcasts and leave us a rating and review. It is a huge help to us and we read every review that comes in. And if you really love what we do here at Quest Company Jr. and you want to take that next step in supporting us, please consider becoming a Patreon subscriber. For as little as $2 a month, you can help us with necessary expenses, help us continue to improve the quality of the show, and get access to exclusive content and patron rewards. 
Speaking of exclusive content, I actually made a song inspired by the music Pokenerd Scott's made for us that's coming up in the back half of this episode, and that track will be available for download on the Patreon soon, like this weekend. So, if you'd like to give us that support, you could do so at patreon.com slash questcompanypodcast. You can find the link to the Patreon on our website, questcompanyjunior.com. If you'd like to contact us, you could do so directly through our website or by finding us on Instagram and Twitter at Junior. You can also hang out with us in our Quest Company Discord and get all the latest updates on Monster Fight and Pocket Monster Fight. The link to that is on our website and Twitter. We know that word of mouth is the best way to get people listening to a new podcast, and that is especially true for independent shows like ours. So we'd love to see you posting about the podcast and telling your friends about us. If we see you tweeting about us or posting fan art using hashtag Junior or hashtag postcards from Pearl, you might get a character named after you on the show. And if you or your kids have fan art of the podcast that you want to share, just make sure when you post it to tag us so that we can see it. Speaking of fan art, we've gotten some more incredible art sent to us since our last episode. Thank you to Fairy Tale Girl MB at M Burgundy on Instagram for a wonderfully awkward sibling portrait of Pearl and Luca, or it might be Pearl and Pillsbury the Ditto disguised as Luca. No way to be sure. <laughs> Thank you to Black Belt Kate at Grand Creation on Twitter for an amazing fan art compilation in postcard form to celebrate episode 100. And a very special thank you to Raina, River, Anthony, Nerd Puppy, and Kyle from the Discord for putting together a very special audio track in honor of us reaching 100 episodes stick around until the very end of this episode to hear it if you haven't seen those go check out our instagram and twitter where we'll be sharing them or on the fan art page of the website or even in the discord a lot of fan art gets posted in there first and you can see it before anyone else quest company jr is a proud member of podicon go a group of independent podcasts supporting high quality content that's fun for the whole family Podicon Go is your reliable corner of the internet for the kind of podcast that everyone can enjoy with shows ranging from animal facts to stories to audio dramas to RPG actual plays and more. Check them out at podicongo.com. I'd also like to take a moment to thank the incredible artists whose music is featured in this episode. Thank you to Foolboy Media for the song Video Game Land. Thank you to Poking Nerd Scott for so many custom tracks. Absolutely nasty. Something nasty this way comes. Hiding from the light. Casting shadows everywhere. We'll teach them a lesson. Those meddling kids. Spectral Smackdown. Variant Villain. Fighting in a lucid dream and large and in charge. Thank you to Zame for Pokemon Coliseum Normal Battle Remastered and Protodome for On the Origin of Species. And thank you to Table topaudio.com for providing the ambient sounds. That's all for me, so let's get back to the action and see Pearl face off against Aquamarine. Thank you for joining us here at Quest Company Jr. With initiative rolled, here's what happens. At the same time that you are wheeling around to face Aquamarine, down the hall, Jax has snuck up on Luca and Ringo, lurking in the shadows as he jumps out with them with a litwick and a sinistee with a shadowy aura around it. Our order will be Jax, Pearl, Luca, Aquamarine, then Ringo. So. I'm doing simplified battle style for that one down the hall because what's more important is you versus Aquamarine. Fair. <laughs> but Jax commands his Litwick to use Will-O-Wisp on Haunter, which comes out to a full success, so Mikey is burned. Oh, no. And then he commands the Sinistee to use a Shadow Rush against the Kecleon, and the little ghost in a teacup rolled a natural two. Oh wow. Uh, so really, really whiffed it there. That is Jax's turn uh, as he's got his two Pokemon out to try to stall them. But as they wheel around to see Jax, they were trying to attempt to get into the door. Luca sees down the hall that Aquamarine is like right out there facing you from the hallway. And I'm sure that he realizes what his priorities are. <laughs> 
it will then take us to your turn, Pearl. What would you like to do? She's got out two Pokemon right now, so as long as you're fighting her solo, you could pull out a second one to fight alongside Fanta. Oh, cool. I would like to pull out Coconut. Great. You've got Fanta and Coconut, and each one of them can have their own, like, main action, extra action, and everything, because that's what she's about to do. I would like to do Thunderbolt on the Tentacruel. Great. A Thunderbolt against the Tentacruel. Go ahead and roll to hit for that one. Oh, that would be a six. A six, unfortunately, is not going to hit as the Tentacruel just (laughs) on its tentacles moves out of the way quickly as the Thunderbolt goes wide. Okay, that's it for Coco. As Coco's Thunderbolt goes wide, what does Fanta do? As Fanta recognizes this Crawdont who you are getting this ping of shadow energy from, he's seen this Crawdont before. He didn't face it himself, but this is Eugene the Crawdont from the fighting tournament. (gasps) Hey, that's a snagged Pokemon. I'm well aware. Well, it's not yours. It is now. Oh, you're so evil. Uh, So what is Fanta going to do? Could I get a sense of how weak the machine is? Of how weak the machine is? Mm -hmm. Sure. You can go ahead and uh, roll 2d6 plus logic. All right, that's a nine. All right, a nine. It looks like it'd take a couple more turns of solid hits to really take it out. Okay, ditch this. Ditch this, Sarah. Fanta uses double kick on Crawdont. Okay, he's going to roll to use double kick against Eugene the Crawdont, who has been stolen from Tom the Fry Cook. So wrong. Eight. Eight is going to be a mixed success. So go ahead and roll 1d6 plus seven. Thirteen. Thirteen is going to be eight double to 16 points of damage for the first kick. Roll to hit for the second one. Nine. Nine, another mixed success. So 1d6 plus seven. Ten. All right, so that's five, double to 10 points of damage from the two kicks. <laughs> As they land against the shell of this shadowy crawdont. Cool. That is all of your turn then, which will take us to Luca. What would you like for him to do? He and Ringo are here in the hall and Jax with this shadow sinistry and Litwick attempting to block the way down the hallway to Aquamarine where she's facing you. I want him to keep attacking Jack. All right, he's got Mikey out right now, so what would you like for Mikey to do? What happens if Mikey does hypnosis on the trainer? On the trainer? Mm Mm-hmm. The Pokemon probably wouldn't have the best idea of what to do. Certainly if they were not super close with their trainer, if they did not have a strong bond. Let's just try hypnosis on the trainer. Okay, he's going to try to use hypnosis on Jax. Yeah. All right, right, uh, Jax is going to roll the tough it out plus instinct. That's a seven, so it's a mixed success, but it would be six turns. So Mikey does just look from the two Pokemon to the trainer and just a sinister smile as he... (laughs) He's like, it was a long day at the aquarium. You're tired at the end of your shift. And Jax slumps to the floor asleep and both of his Pokemon are like, what? (laughs) (laughs) It's a very Paul Blart Mall Cop moment. (laughs) He will have advantage to wake up on his turns, but right in this moment, he's asleep. And so the Pokemon are a little unsure of what exactly to do. Ringo's like, well, that's something new. Well, there you go. All right, man. Uh, (laughs) So what's Luca doing as Mikey puts Jax to sleep? Can Luca try to go for the door? The door to the office? Yeah, the the one that we haven't reached yet on the other side of the hallway. They're at the door right now, and they were, like, trying to get it open. It's closed right now, but he sees that, like, across the way, that's behind them. Jax, asleep, is directly in front of them, and he sees across the way down the hall that you and Aquamarine are in the middle of uh, this battle. He looks to Ringo. You think you you can take these two? Uh, yeah. Okay, great. He'll run. (laughs) He'll say, come on, Mikey. And he'll run his way over to where Pearl is battling Aquamarine. (laughs) Nice. They start going over that way. As that turn ends, Mikey does take eight points of damage from the burn. But that is Luca's turn. It is then Aquamarine's turn. And she says, oh, I'm going to enjoy this. Tentacruel, if you will, surf and... Oh, no, Fanta. Tentacruel sends this big rush of water towards Fanta and Coconut. So go ahead and roll for both of them to tough it out plus agility. It's a 10 for Coconut and 
a nine for Fanta. Okay, so a full success for Coconut and he a just mixed and success. It. Yeah. It's a surfing, it's a surfing Alolan and right you. Beautiful. You love to Give see it. Give the people what they want. <laughs> He's like, Sealy does this for me all the time. I don't get the big deal. Rah, 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 He's like, this is my hobby. <laughs> it's literally my whole thing. <laughs> High damage roll. Oh. All right. So that is going to be 22 points of water damage to start off with as the base. But since Coconut got a full success, he just takes a fourth of it. Minus his special defense. Oh my gosh, his special defense is so high. He yeah, takes six. a point of damage. Yeah, again, he's like, I love the waves. Watch me surf. Wow, I forgot his special defense is so high. And then Fonta will take, let's see, half of the damage. So it would be 11 minus his special defense, so eight. And then double to 16 points of super effective water damage. Okay, that could have been much worse. It could have. Uh <laughs> But that is what the Tentacruel does as she then commands for the Crawdont. Well, all right then, Crawdont, use Shadow Dance. Prepare to take them out. And the Crawdont just starts skittering around on its little crab legs. Find your little Shadow Dance too, lady! <laughs> Raising up his attack. Oh, okay. I see. I see. I see. <laughs> Preparing to strike. But oh, that is. I want to Crawdont with somebody. It is in Ringo's turn. What would you like for Ringo to do as Jax is asleep on the ground? Ringo has Kecleon out right now. Which one's a shadow Pokemon? Are they both shadow Pokemon? The Sinus T is a shadow Pokemon. Little Ghost in Teacup has a shadowy aura. Can he try to catch that? Ringo does not have anything that could, but oh. he could try to, like, just grab the Pokeball to put it back in it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Go ahead and uh, is Ringo trying to do it or is Kecleon trying to do it? This might not be allowed. Could Ringo do it and could Kecleon use Bind on the trainer? Sure. We're playing fast and loose right now. The Bind will just work because Jax is asleep. So Yeah. Blah, he grabs, um, Ringo grabs tongue. two Pokeballs. All right. Well, go ahead and roll for Ringo as he attempts to get past these uh, ghostly Pokemon to grab their Pokeballs. Uh, have him roll 2d6 plus agility. Oh, nice. It's a flat eight. Flat eight? Great. He's thiefy. He's he's roguelike, so <laughs> he's got he's got some agility. I'm a, I'm just going to go ahead and say that that's a, that's a success for Ringo, and he is able to grab both of them without taking any damage from them uh, hitting him since Jax is just right on the floor next to him. But he grabs the two Pokeballs and puts them back in there. Nice. <laughs> nice. That is Ringo's turn, which will take us back up to the top. Jax is still asleep and bound up in the tongue of Kecleon. Yeah, all right. That is definitely Ringo style. <laughs> Meanwhile, that was his turn and his Pokemon are uh, back in their Pokeballs now as he has been incapacitated. Uh, so Pearl, it is your turn. Luca has not joined the fray over here yet. So you still have the full action economy of both of your Pokemon. So cool. what would you like to do? All right, let's try Thunderbolt again on the Tentacruel. All right, cool. Go ahead and roll to hit for Coconut. Yeah, now we're rolling. That's what we needed. Okay, it's a flat 10 plus three. Ooh, nice. A 13 total. Excellent. So go ahead and roll your damage for Thunderbolt. It's going to be 3d6, and then we'll add on to it. Love it. Okay, so it's a flat 12 plus special attack. So that's plus six. 18. All right, 12 plus 6, 18. You also add his stab, which is 2, 20. Yes. And you then also the add magnet. your warrior and your magnet, yes. So you add warrior, which you always add to everything, which is an extra plus 2. And then magnet, which increases his electric type moves by an amount equal to his uh, current move tier, which is 2. So all in all, that was 18 plus an extra 6, so 24 points. Can we say that it was so powerful because he was picking up some of the like the pieces from the machine that had fallen off when Fanta was kicking it? Yeah. And like with the thunder and the electricity, it picks up parts of the machine and then adds that. Yeah, it's also wet in this room Ooh, now. Oh yeah. Nice. Okay, so that is 24 uh, minus its special defense, so that's going to be 18 double to 36 points of damage to the Tentacruel. Nice. Ratchy! That's what I'm talking about, Coconut. So that is what Coconut does. Meanwhile, what is Fanta going to do? Okay, Fanta really, really is shaky. 
but I look at him and I'm like, don't give up. Come on, you got this. Let's try double kick again on the crawdon. All right, cool. Go ahead and roll to hit two times. Nine, 10, 11 for the first. That is going to be a full success. So you get the 1d6 plus 14. Oh, boo, yeah. It was a five. Um, 19. 19 is going to come out to 14 doubled to 28 points. Heck yeah. And the second hit? 12. 12 total. Excellent. Another full success. Your d6 plus 14. 18. 18 is going to be 13 double to 26 points of damage. Again, big kicks from the burb. <laughs> that is what he does on his turn. And Eugene, the shadowy crawdont, uh, did look pretty rocked after that. That is your turn then, Pearl, as now Luca enters the fray over here. So, oh, hi, Luca. Uh, hey. And what is he going to do? Can Luca shape the field? Yes, he can. He, like, s- sees the situation, pauses. Like Who? every good um, safety certified Red Cross trainer. <laughs> <He's-> <laughs> he says, stop. What is the situation? <laughs> He's going to uh, assess the situation and uh, see how the best way to proceed would be. If he is going to shape the field, is that with Mikey, I'm assuming? And if so, what stat is Mikey using? Let's shape the field with Mikey. Oh, man, I've never used shape the field with instinct, I feel like. I don't think you have. Let's try it today. Okay, great. Go ahead and roll 2d6 plus instinct for Mikey as he tries to shape the field. That's 12. 12. Nice. So you get to choose one tag from the instinct list to add to your side of the field. Now, it was two, but we've adjusted the amounts of tags that you add via shape the field in the latest updates to Pocket Monster Fight. So what would you like to add to y'all's side? We're going to use Immobilize. Your Pokemon prevents an opposing Pokemon's escape. The opposing Pokemon cannot get any farther from your Pokemon than they are now, and they cannot be swapped out if they belong to another character. We're going to use that on Crawdon. Okay, great. Using that on Eugene to keep her from swapping them out. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. All right, that is what Mikey does. How does he do so? Mikey sees Crawdon with his ghosty magic, remembers all that revolves around him in his story. And in the dance that's raising up his hit status, yes, Mikey just puts a little like, <laughs> okay, in the dance that's raising up his hit status, uh, Mikey goes to Crawdot's dance card and just fills out his name for the rest of the dance. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He's a very old-fashioned crawdog. He then takes Eugene by the claws and begins dancing around with him. A little tango. Him. <laughs> a little Ooh. tango. As Crawdon is like, bah, bah, this is not what I wanted. No other dance partners but me. <laughs> uh, so Mikey keeps him in this deathly tango. I was going to do a very practical thing, like, oh, he trips him slightly. But then I thought, oh, nah. nah. That doesn't feel like Mikey. No. All right, cool. But that is Lucas' turn. Mikey then takes eight more points of damage from his burn. As you do. That is Lucas' turn, which will then take us to Aquamarine. As she says, oh, well, well, well. Two for one today. All right, then. Crawdont, shadow rush against that loathsome ghost. That is a natural two. Oh, been there, been there. Despite the fact that it is a shadow move and, you know, should be able to hit a ghost, Eugene the Crawdont tries to, like, headbutt Mikey, but Hunter just... He does a beautiful tango turn. Does that tango turn, and he dips Eugene right as he tries to do the headbutt. (laughs) It does not work. Nice to have hands. (laughs) And then the Tentagruel once again will attempt a surf. So go ahead and have everybody go ahead and roll to tough it out plus agility. That was a flat eight. And then that was a 10. So let's go ahead and give the 10 to Fanta. Okay. The 10 being a total of 12 for Fanta. And then Coconut got that flat eight plus agility, nine, 10, 11. Okay, so full successes for both of them, kind of regardless of whatever order, they both have good agility. And then go ahead and roll for Mikey as well. Nine. Nine. All right, so a mixed success for Mikey. All right, so then 
Two full successes. Man, all right, Fonta's lucking out with these successes, keeping that from doing too much damage. The damage is also not as high that time. That is only going to be 15 points of damage from the get-go. Ooh. Quartered for Fanta and Coconut is two each, which is going to come out to just two super effective points against Fanta as they're just like ducking out of the way. Fanta like leaps up and he hangs from one of the fluorescent lights on nice. the ceiling uh, and just gets splashed Very a little bit. Cool. And again, Coconut uh, taking one point of damage again, just riding the wave. Why riding that wave, man. Just riding um, the wave. Does that mean it's four points of damage total for Fanta? No, it was because it was so low. Oh, it's wow. one double to two super effective. It was rough. Okay. Uh, but then let's see here. 15 halved is going to be eight for Mikey minus his special defense of two. So just five points of damage to Mikey. So again, he's more concerned about his dance with Eugene. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is what Aquamarine does. It is then Ringo's turn. He has put Jax's Pokemon back in their Pokeballs. And what would you like for him to do? Can he hit Jax over the head? He can go to secure Jax even further. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think he does a full cowboy wrangle. You know, there's there's no budging from these knots. Yeah, Jax is getting he full learned on. Well. He learned well. He was in a cowboy wrangle the last time we saw him. That's so. true. Full on hogtie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice. All right, cool. That is what Ringo does. Securing Jax even further. Since he's still asleep, it is really not an issue, especially with Kecleon's help. Kecleon over here, Captain tying knots. All right. <laughs> but that takes us back to Jax, who is still asleep with the one and a two. And then Pearl, it is your turn. Since Luca is here now, you are sharing one turn worth of actions between Coconut and Fanta now at this point. So you've got them both out, but they have one main action and extra action to split between them. And Eugene the Crawdaunt looks rough. Okay, then let's try to take him out officially and let's use Fanta. Use double kick on that Crawdaunt. You can do it. All right, cool. Go ahead and roll to hit with the first. That is a 10 flat. 10 flat. Excellent. Go ahead and roll your damage. Um, That's 19. 19. Goodness gracious. So that's going to be 14 double 28 points of damage is more than enough that one of those double kicks will KO the Crawdaunt. Woo! That's one water type down, my beautiful bird. As Aquamarine is about to try to pull it back into the Pokeball, you and Luca both have a moment as it is KO'd. <gasps> would one snag of you like that. to try to snag it? Yeah, snag it. Snag it back for good. Who would you like to attempt to snag it? You or Luca? Who would be better at it? It depends. It's technically two of Luca's favorite types, so he'd have to, an extra plus two on top of whatever else. Oh, let's definitely use Luca then. All right, cool. So Luca is going to attempt to catch Eugene the Crawdon to restore it to his rightful owner. So go ahead. Pearl's just in like battle mode. She's like, yeah, we got him. And he's like, no, 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 not yet. No, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. We need that one. We need that one. All right. Which ball would you like for Luca to use of what's in his inventory? What would you like for him to throw at Eugene? Let's do a lure ball. A lure ball. All right. So go ahead and roll 2d6 for Luca to catch a Pokemon. Pokemon. Oh, yeah. It's a flat nine. Flat nine. Excellent. He's got a plus one. From the lure ball, he's got plus two because it is two of his favorite types, water and dark. Woo! Yeah, buddy. It's also at no HP, which counts as being, you know, below 10%. He's not having the knockout bonus because he's using the snag machine. Uh, and even though it is a higher tier Pokemon, that negative does not outweigh everything that he's adding in to make that a full success as... Whew, he throws the lure ball at Eugene the Crawdaunt, who gets sucked up into it as the ball falls to the wet floor and shakes once, twice, a third time, and clicks Woo! as Eugene has been snagged back. That's not Luca's turn. That's just something that happened as it got knocked out. But Fanta's first double kick hit. I don't think that he's like right next to the tentacruel for the second one, but you hit can. Hit the machine on the second one. <laughs> sure. Go ahead and just roll to hit the machine. <laughs> Wasn't that fun when we were good at this game for a moment? <laughs> um, that's a seven. Seven? I mean, like, he just does one backwards kick right at it, but it's more for show than anything yeah, else. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but you still have an extra action. Would you like for Coconut to use, like, quick attack or yeah, something? Yeah, I love since that. They can individually use moves. 
Again, outside of the norm, but we're playing fast and loose right now. We're dealing with Team Nasty. <laughs> Go ahead and roll to hit against the Tentacruel. 11. All right, that is a full success. Very nice. So Ooh, go wow. ahead and uh, meow, 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 meow. Roll 1d6 plus 7 for the quick attack. That is a 13. I rolled a 6 on the dice. Minus the Tentacruel's defense. So that is going to come out to 9 points of damage from the quick attack. A little slap on the cheek. A little slap on that cheek. Great. 9 points of damage dealt to the Tentacruel. As Aquamarine says, oh, well, you've done it now, haven't you? I think I should introduce you to a new friend I just met out in the bay. And she throws out a quillfish. It looks unlike a normal quillfish, but it does not have a shadowy aura. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Pearl. <laughs> oh, quillfish are fun. I've never seen them before. It is just sort of floating in the water that is pooling up on the ground from the Tentacruel's surf attacks. But it is then Luca's turn after you. So what would you like for Mikey to do? Let's have Mikey, you sleep on the tentacruel. Hypnosis. Okay, hypnosis on the tentacruel? Yeah, let's see if it happens again. All right. So the tentacruel is going to tough it up plus instinct. That is a flat five, so not going to do it. And it will be asleep for three turns unless it wakes up early. Booyah. I really love that move. That is what Luca does with his main action. Would you like for him to take any extra action on his turn? No, I think we're good. Cool beans. Also, I-5 is no longer on the field since um, Crawdont is no longer on the field. That makes sense. Good call. That is Luca's turn, though, which will then take us to Aquamarine. First up, her strange quillfish seems to have a darker color scheme overall than a regular quillfish and has some more pink accents, pinky purpley accents to it. It is going to swim up toward Fanta and try to use Aqua Tail, which is going to be a mixed success with a nine total. So that is going to be 13 minus Fanta's defense of two. So 11 double to 22 points of super effective water damage from the aqua tail of the quillfish. Ouch! Look alive there, Fanta! Ah. Oh, I know, I know. Then the tentacruel is guaranteed to sleep for that one turn, so that is what Aquamarine is able to do, as she just sees that, you know, she's kind of not fully cornered, but she's blocked off from the exit now by Luca, and then you are in this room. The other hallway where Luca is not just leads to the cooler, so she doesn't have a ton of room to run here. That is her turn, which takes us to Ringo, who I assume is just finishing up the hog tie on Jax. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Securing that, making sure there's nothing else. When he's done, I think he will go uh, where Aquamarine is in the fight, the big fight. Great. He finishes that up, makes sure that Jax is fully secured. and uh, <laughs> He's not rushing that, though. No, no, he's certainly not worried about getting over there with a quickness. <laughs> No. He's uh, he's really, really taking his he's, time. He's already gone above and beyond in his mind. Yeah, you, you can't tie the knots much better than they already are, but he's just like, yeah, well, oh, it looks like things are going all right over there. <laughs> We're just going to make sure you're all nice and tucked in here. You got anything good in your pockets? Which <laughs> <laughs> that is what's happening on Ringo's turn. I'm just taking I'm taking <laughs> Jax out of initiative <laughs> because he can't do anything really at this point. But Pearl, that takes us back to you. What would you like to do? Can I make a nature check on this Pokemon? Oh, uh, you want to try to discern traits yeah, against the quillfish? quillfish. Mm -hmm. Sure, go ahead and roll to discern traits. An eight. All right, an eight. All right, so that is a mixed success. So you can ask one from the discern traits list. Great. What's its type? The quillfish. Strange things are afoot in Kanoko, as this is a Hisuian quillfish. Ooh. Meaning that its typing is dark and poison. That is your extra action. And then for your main action, what would you like to do on your turn? Let's use double kick on the spiky ball. Great. Go ahead and roll to hit for the first. Eight. Eight. All right. A mixed success. So roll a D6 plus seven. Eight. All right. That is going to be three points of damage to the quillfish. Woo. We're doing great. As it is not super effective. Hmm. I thought it was, but it was not. Okay. As I check its type. That was a natural 11. 
Natural 11. Nice. Since Fanta is holding the scope lens right now, you finally know what it does. It increases his crit range by one, so it's a, a critical hit. So it'll be 2d6 plus 14 for that second hit. Who's not double effective now? 20. So that is going to be 15 points of damage. All in all, 18 points dealt to the quillfish on this turn. It's like we're hitting a bouncy ball with spikes. He does kick this spiky bouncy ball, but he does manage to mostly avoid making contact with the spikes. That is your turn then, which will then take us to Luca. What would you like for Luca to do with Mikey now that the tentacruel is asleep? Let's try and dream either. Dream Eater. I'm going to enter your dreams, and you'll see ice cream melting into green ooze. Mm. A rich, sugary green. <laughs> nice. That is going to not need to roll to hit because it's asleep, so it's just going to happen. Yeah. So go ahead and roll 3d6 for Dream Eater. Dream Eater. <laughs> 12 plus 7, 19. Nice. <laughs> 19 is going to be 13 doubled to 26 Whoa! points of super effective damage to the sleeping tentacruel as Mikey gets back 13. You'll love to see it. That is Luca's turn, which will then take us to Aquamarine. Aquamarine! Wait, why did I say that so nice? That's a great question. <laughs> but on her turn. Pearl's like, did you used to love eating ice cream as a kid? I still love ice cream. What is wrong with you? But most of all, I love frozen yogurt and sorbet. My ears! <laughs> Piercing! Or My ears are bleeding! A nice Italian ice. <laughs> Stop it! It's a torture chamber! A gelato, even. How could you be so e- uh, Actually, I do like gelato. It's really good. It's really good. <laughs> the Hisuian Quillfish is going to, seizing the opportunity, attempt another Aqua Tail against Fanta. Comes out to a nine total after it rolled a six, so that is going to then be a mixed success. Again with a low damage roll, so that's going to be 11 minus his defense. Nine, double to 18 super effective points against Fanta. That is the quillfish's turn, and Tentacruel does not wake up. It remains asleep. Uh, it'll sleep for potentially one more turn, but that is her turn. And then Ringo rolls up. Oh, hi! Well, looks like there's a party over here. Sure is, man. would love to have you join. I love a good line dance. What would you like for Kecleon to do? Let's try side beam on the tentacruel. Great. Go ahead and roll for the side beam to hit with advantage. He's got plus two. Nice. That's a natural 11. That would give him a little extra something if it wasn't asleep already, but since it is asleep, it's just going to be the damage, but that's all right. Go ahead and roll 2d6. Oh, 12. 12. Nice. Two sixes. Excellent. Ah, dream eater. With a side beam, extra fun delight. So that, with Kecleon stats and everything, is going to come out to 17 minus the Tentacruel special defense. So that's going to be 11 double to 22 points of damage to the Tentacruel. Wow, Tentacruels are tough. Did you steal this one from the exhibit? More like borrowed. You're so wrong. <laughs> and the Tentacruel looks very bad. That is Ringo's turn, which takes us back up to you, Pearl. What would you like to do? Can I do psychic on the tentacruel? Sure. Yeah, we just, let's knock it out. <laughs> let's be done. Great. Go ahead and uh, roll for Coco to use psychic. He's got advantage because it's asleep. That's a 10 flat. Great. Go ahead and roll your damage for psychic. Remember that time three Pokemon just hit the same Pokemon at once? <laughs> Hey, you know what? Nothing wrong with some focus fire, especially when you got the numbers advantage because you put the other trainer to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> 10 plus attack, 16. Plus your stab also and your warrior. Whoa. 92. 
16 plus the extra two and two. So 20 points. So it's 14 double to 28. More than enough to knock out the slumbering tentacruel who was already just in a heap on the floor. So it doesn't look too much different, but it just sort of like... Don't worry, we'll get you back home in the exhibit. Rolls over a little bit. I'm sure he'll be much nicer there. Aquamarine pulls the tentacruel back into its polka ball as she starts just sort of surveying what's going on here, looking at her options. And she says, all right, then. I suppose this is what you were after anyway, isn't it? Oh, my God. (gasps) You evil woman. Show me the beast. Come out to play, big. No. Imagine that scene where it's like, Luke, I am your father, and I am Luke falling down. Yes, as she sends out this massive, shadowy octillery. You're the worst, Aquamarine! The golden octillery takes up a big chunk of the hallway as your aura reader goes off, and you see this shadowy aura around big. Ominously. I, I try to I try to walk over. I don't want to hit him. In the midst of battle, while they're raging, I reach out my hand. Uh, Remember me, big. You reach out your hand, and I'll tell you what happens here in a second. Oh man. Uh, but that was your turn, though. It is then Luca's turn. What's he gonna do? He'll be like, uh, Pearl. I don't want Pearl, you to get closer. Please don't get Pearl, any closer to the big closer. octopus, please. <laughs> I do not think this is what you're going to want. Can we try hypnosis on Big? You can. As Mikey's like, come on, big guy. Nighty night. (laughs) And Big only rolls a seven. Oh, my goodness. I love this move. That is, uh, yeah, tell you what, Luke is not dealing a ton of damage this time around, but he sure is providing some uh, massive support. Yeah, that is only seven. And Big will sleep for two turns. Okay, great. But that is Luca's action as Mikey continues to take damage from the burn from the Litwick. Oh, gosh. He's still wrapped in that ghostly flame. That is Luca's turn, though, as it is then Aquamarine's turn. And she, seeing that she is uh, outnumbered at this point and that the reveal of Big was not as uh, frightening as she'd hoped since he immediately got put to sleep, she says, all right, um, well... Quillfish, let's go. And she starts trying to run past uh, Luca and Ringo. She's going to try. What? And Quillfish is going to attempt to use an aqua tail on Fanta before swimming away and catching up with Aquamarine. A mixed success is just barely going to hit Fanta. So that's going to be 10 double to 20 points of super effective water damage from that aqua tail as it slaps Fanta. And then it goes to try to get away. But... It will provoke a free attack from Fanta as it moves past him because it doesn't have anything to uh, avoid that. So if you would like, Fanta can make a melee attack as the quillfish is uh, trying to get away. Yeah, um, let's go ahead and do Night Slash. A Night Slash. All right, go ahead and roll to hit. Ten. Ten total. All right, a full success. So go ahead and roll your damage. Uh, That is a 21. All right, so that's going to be 16 half to eight points as it is not very effective. That happens as it moves past him and then uh, Aquamarine is going to attempt to try to get past Luca and Ringo. Try, lady. So go ahead and uh, roll for them to attempt to stop her. Uh, Just roll a flat 2d6. 11. They both are able to block her off from getting further down the hallway. She stops directly in front of them. Ringo specifically grabs her, I think, since, you know, he's the adult who (laughs) is more muscular than teen Luca. Guys, here's my handcuffs. I I chuck them. That is what happens on her turn as Big is asleep for that first one. And she says, wake up, you big oaf. Don't talk to my friend like that. It is then Ringo's turn. Uh, Ringo is going to use bind. Okay. On uh, Aquamarine. Okay, so Kecleon is going to try to bind her. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and uh, just roll 2d6 plus 2 for Kecleon. Nine. Nine? Okay. Uh, she is struggling, but with the big tongue, bang, Kecleon does wrap her up, and she is uh, attempting to get away. It's less about the damage and more about just keeping her from going anywhere. Totally. But that is what happens on his turn. 
Meanwhile, back up at the top with you, Pearl. What would you like to do? Quillfish has moved away from Fanta and it looks as though he's about to get engaged with what's happening over here with Aquamarine and Big is a big slumbering heap of octopus. Can I re-snag Big? You can attempt to. I shall attempt. All right. What sort of ball are you throwing? Uh, can I use a timer ball plus one for every round of battle? Sure. I would say that in this kind of situation, since it's not a wild Pokemon, it would be each round that the Pokemon has been uh, out. Then never mind. That was my question, which makes total sense. Then I will use a net ball. I am keeping track of the rounds in case you do use a timer ball again later. But a net ball. Excellent. Go ahead and roll 2d6. Flat nine. A nine. You've got a plus two from the net ball. You've got a plus one because it is one of your favorite types being water. 12, we're up to 12. You've got a plus one because it is suffering from a status effect currently. 13. You've got a minus two because it's at full health. And 11. A, and minus two because of its tier. So comes out to a nine total as Ooh, that might not be enough. You throw the net ball at big as the big artillery gets sucked in there. There's also another minus one as it is an alpha artillery. Ooh. So with an eight, he gets sucked into the net ball, which falls onto the wet ground. It shakes once and twice and then the slumbering behemoth bursts out of the ball. No! It seems as though you'll have to do some more. I have to hit him. <laughs> in order to weaken him to get him in the ball. That is your main action. Any extra action that you would like to do? Could I use quick attack? You could use quick attack. I'll use quick attack on my friend. All right, quick attack on big. Coconut's just going to rush in and try to get him while he's sleeping. 11. An 11, a full success. Go ahead and roll your damage. 12. So that's going to be seven points of damage to big as Coconut just sort of <laughs> just goes up and like gives him a little A little smack. paddle with a little tail. paddle, Yeah. yeah. Snap out of it. <laughs> that is your turn, which takes us to Luca, as he's currently bound up with Aquamarine over here as she was trying to get away. She and the quillfish are now over here. Can Mikey use hypnosis on Aquamarine? He can try. Okay. Uh, Mikey's like so over. He's like, just sleep, everybody. He's everybody like, will you all just go to bed? Will you all just go to bed? <laughs> Can everybody just, I really didn't want to do any of this. Let's all just take a nice little nappy nap, <laughs> all right? Aquamarine gets a mixed success, but she does fall asleep. <laughs> You've realized what Jake Weiss and Virgil realized all those years ago. Why do that to the Pokemon when you could just do, do it, it to, to the, the trainer? <laughs> do it to the bad trainer. <laughs> as Aquamarine is asleep now. Love it. Okay, <laughs> interesting. That is Luca's turn as Mikey then takes more burn damage. He's like, ah, I really gotta pat this out. This is, this is ridiculous. Yeah. But on Aquamarine's turn, she's asleep. Big wakes up and now in a frenzy, not being told what to do, is gonna use Shadow Rush against Coco with a natural 11. Dealing 26 base damage there, minus Coco's defense of four. So 22 points of damage to Coconut as Big takes some damage in recoil. But this big tentacle just boom, slams into Coconut who just After that, the Quillfish is going to attempt to act it seems to be more uh, on the same page as Aquamarine than uh, Jax's Pokemon were. So it is going to attempt to use Poison Jab against Ringo. Ooh. That is a mixed success. So one of those toxic spikes just, uh, oh, geez. Oh, <laughs> I already have regrets. Um, oh, no. <laughs> jabs into him and the toxins begin <gasps> coursing through his veins, but he's not poisoned or anything like that because it was only a mixed success, oh, but okay, it didn't feel good. Yeah, he wasn't a fan. He's like, this is what I signed up for. <laughs> that is then the end of her turn as she is asleep, but then it is Ringo's turn. What's he doing? Can we really make sure that bind actually works? Sure. We're doing the official no rush hog tie. Great. Go ahead and Very roll for Very anti like what actually cowboys have to do. <laughs> I think that in this, now that he actually has stakes, since he just got jabbed, yeah. he's like, all right, I got to deal with this. 
Okay, it's a flat nine. A flat nine. He, at this point, especially now that she's asleep, like, she is tied up, but the quillfish is still a nuisance. But that's what he's doing. Pearl, it's back to you. Big is awake once again. Oh, I'm sorry, Big, but I have to do this for your own good. I'm going to have Coconut use Thunderbolt. Nice. Thunderbolt. Go ahead and roll to hit. Ooh, that's a natural 10. All right, that is going to be a full success. So go ahead and roll your damage. 3d6 plus 12, I do believe. 12 plus 9. So 21. 21. Uh, so that's going to be 16 double to 32 points of damage. Wow. I'm sorry, Big. 32 points. Uh, looks as though that was a, uh, a sizable hit against Big. Very nice. The artillery continues to thrash about the place without any direction given from its trainer. It is then Lucas' turn. What's he doing? Hypnosis on Big. Okay. All right. Big rolled an eight. So that's just a mixed success. So he does go to sleep and it'll be for four turns. Man, it is hard to stay awake sometimes, guys. Big goes to sleep as Mikey just hunter. Again, just battlefield control from mm-hmm. the haunter here. Love to see it. He takes some more of that burn damage, but that is Luca's turn. Then on Aquamarine's turn, Big would have liked to have done a big attack, but he is asleep. And then the quillfish, I think that since <laughs> Ringo has probably removed himself from it to a degree, that it is instead going to recognize that Mikey is uh, the real kind of issue here and goes to use Aqua Tail against Mikey. And that's going to be a full success, but is only going to deal 11 points of damage to Mikey. That is Aquamarine's turn as the quillfish is kind of running out of water to swim around in on the floor and also not having any strong direction to go in as she has been uh, uh, effectively subdued at this point. What would Ringo like to do now as Kecleon has Aquamarine all tied? Can Kecleon attack the quillfish? Sure. He can go ahead and try to attack the quillfish. Ancient power. Ancient power. Okay, cool. Go ahead and roll for Kecleon to hit with ancient power. Flat six. All right, plus, so that's going to be a mixed success. So go ahead and roll a 2d6 for Kecleon. 10. Great. So all in all, plus his special attack minus its defense comes out to 10 points of damage against the Quillfish, who seems like a, a hardy little pokey fella. But that is what happens on Ringo's turn. Pearl, it is then your turn. Big, please let me be your friend again. This is what I've been doing for the past, like, week of my life. <laughs> What would you like to do? I'm going to try to catch Big again. All right, what are you throwing? A luxury ball. Big deserves luxury after all this torment. (laughs) Okay, so no bonus coming from the luxury ball. Just trying to get him in a nice home again. Go ahead and roll to catch Pokemon. I'd like to use the full success. Okay, what'd you have on the dice originally? Six. Okay, so it's going to be a 10 base yeah, instead. Yeah, 10 base. Woo! Living in the lap of luxury again, big. We're going to treat you right. All right, so there's no bonus from the ball, but you do have a plus one because it is one of your favored types. He's not at full health anymore, so you don't have any pluses or minuses from that. You have minus two from its tier and minus one for it being an alpha. So all in all, you're at minus two. But it is suffering from a status effect. And at this point, its its, it's owner is restrained. Mm-hmm. So just barely going to come out to a 10 as you throw the luxury ball, which sucks big up into it. The golden artillery sparkles as it goes into the ball. It falls to the ground as it shakes once, twice, a third time and clicks as you snag big the octillery. Woo! You're home! As big goes into the Pokeball, Luca, rolling a mixed success with his agility, goes to Aquamarine's belt to grab the Pokeball of the Quillfish, and it does ram into him with the spikes as he (gasps) goes to put it back in the Luca! ball, but with only a mixed success, it knocks him aback uh, as the spikes make contact, but he does bring the quillfish back into the ball. Medic! Oh, wait, that's me. <laughs> as that happens, Fanta, who I can only assume while you've not been directing him to do anything else, has just been wailing at this snag ball machine. 
Yes, absolutely. He hates this thing. He hates this thing. And if you haven't been directing him to do anything else, once you told him that that is part of what Team Nasty's doing and it's part of what's happening with the Shadow Pokemon, he is just unleashing a flurry of flurry of kicks. And as Big goes into the Pokeball and as the Quillfish is put away, Aquamarine is subdued. He kicks it, kicks it, and with one last fiery, blazing kick, smashes this machine. And as he does so, Fanta begins to glow. Woo! Yeah, buddy! Wait, hold on. What? And then I would like to imagine that Pearl takes uh, Seely and all of the Vanillites, and there's like a little like ice cream <laughs> circle around him. <laughs> ah, Fanta is glowing, and we all know this has been waiting for so long. <laughs> Just a little mix of... Uh, the classic. Absolutely. But as he smashes down with this kick and begins to glow, the kick chicken gets larger. <gasps> legs longer. Give me those 70s vibes. The hairdo gets longer and cooler. Yeah. <laughs> as still wearing his top hat in this scope lens monocle, Fanta the Combuskin evolves into Fanta the Blaziken. The Disco Bird. And that is where we'll end this episode. Woohoo! We did it! Luca, how you hanging in there? Oh, jeez! Uh, Vanilla, can you help out over here? These guys need a palate cleanser from all that poison. No! Fanta, you look great! Ha, 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 Fanta time, Fanta time. Ha, 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 Fanta time! Blaziken! Hello friends, Jonah here from Quest Company Jr. popping in to say that the show that you've just been listening to is part of the Podicon Go podcasting network a group of independent creators committed to creating, distributing, and supporting content that's family friendly and fun for all ages if you enjoy this show, be sure to subscribe on your preferred podcasting platform and show some love with a five-star rating and review. Every time you do, you are helping support the creation of more family-friendly content. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Postcard from Poor. On Quest Company Junior. Postcards from Pearl is a fan-made podcast and is not affiliated with Nintendo, Game Freak, or the Pokemon Company. Thank you to TabletopAudio.com for providing the ambient sounds. And thank you to TabletopAudio.com for providing the ambient sounds. For providing those ambient sounds. For providing the ambient sounds. Ambient sounds. Ambient sounds. The ambient sounds. The ambient sounds. The ambient sounds. Tabletopaudio.com for providing the ambient sounds. Boom, boom. The ambient sounds. The ambient sounds. Those ambient sounds. Providing the ambient sounds. For providing the ambient sounds. Ambient sounds. Ambient sounds. So many ambient sounds this week. Ambient sounds. Coming in clutch with those ambient sounds. Oh, what's this? What's this? They provided the ambient sounds. Providing the ambient sounds. Ambient sounds. Are you sure? Did they do it again? Why, yes, they did. The ambient sounds. Thank you to tabletopaudio.com for providing the ambient sounds. For providing the ambient sounds. The ambient sounds. Ambient sounds. Ambient sounds. Ambient sounds. Sounds. Those ambient sounds. 
thank you to tabletopaudio.com for providing, and I got to get really close to the microphone to say this, the ambient sounds. Ambient sounds. Ambient sounds. The ambient sounds. Also, as always, thank you to tabletopaudio.com for providing the ambient sounds. We have been blessed.